The last um, piece here is going to be geometric solids, and we're going to find volume, like how much can we fill up. So you remember that um, we discussed polygons, which were just the straight edges connected and closed and with interior angles. Um, we call here a polyhedron the similar thing, except now it's not an edge, it's a full face right, that we're putting together to make a three-dimensional object. And that way we, instead of edges, we have faces now. And that way we have like a nice little box with these faces and we can find area, um, volume, and see how much we can fill it up. We did do a little in prob the problem solving chapter of this, but now we're actually kind of digging now deep into the sand and swimming deep in the pool with volume and the geometric solids. So um, we're going to use polyhedrons, which are just faces connected, still with interior angles and with edges, but now three-dimensional that we call faces enclosed, connected. Um, we're only going to do a few. So the first one is always the rectangular base that we love so much. And what I mean by that is the cube and the rectangular prism and also the pyramid. Now, volume is just the area of the base times the height. That's volume of any shape. As long as you know that, in general, the volume is going to be the area of the base times the height, then you're fine. So here, in the cube, even though you know that it, the faces are all squares, really the area of the base is s times s times height times s, s cubed. The rectangular prism, notice the bottom is a rectangle. So the area of the base is length times width and then times height, right? Area of the base times height, length times width times height. The pyramid, notice that the base is still rectangular, so it's length times width and then times height, right? Okay, but here notice that um, the triangle was half a rectangle and then volume is one third the volume of a rectangular prism. And so there is some sort of relationship between two-dimensional and then three-dimensional. Notice that when we're in three-dimensional, it's one-third of the box, but we're in two dimensions, it's one half of the rectangle. And so if you ever get to take calculus, you'll see a deeper relationship there. But for now, the pyramid you could always think of as a, a triangle, right? Where the area of a triangle is one half a rectangle, area of a pyramid, uh, volume of a pyramid is one third of the rectangular prism. So, okay, let's try a couple of examples. Again, volume is one extra unit, so we're going to have cubic units, and we'll show this through the examples. So if I want to find the volume of a cube with sides lengths of 6 meters, so I always like drawing because it's fun, but also gives me a really good idea of what I'm dealing with. You know. So cube is side, 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 all the faces are the same. Okay, so here the volume is going to be side times side times side, or in other words, S cubed. But we do know that the length of the side is six meters. So that means this little edge here is also six meters and right here, six meters. So we can either do volume is equal to six meters cubed or six meters times six meters times six meters. And so if you don't know six times six times six, you can do six caret symbol right here, diagonal from the seven cubed and get 216. But this also means that we have meters times meters times meters, right? X times X times X is X cubed, right? Multiplying, same base, product in between, 
we'll add the exponents. So here, that's how we get the cubic units because we're multiplying three factors. So this will be me cubic meters. Okay, that's not too bad, right? So how about this rectangular prism? Remember that the rectangular prism, this volume is, is exactly one-third of the rectangular prism, which is length times width times height. Okay, so here we have the area of the base, so one-third, four times three, so four feet times three feet times the height, which is eight feet. I just want you to notice that we do see the third and the three reduce out, and we're left with eight times four, which is 32, but then the feet times feet times feet still remains, so it's still cubic feet no matter what. So volume will always be cubic feet no matter what, or I should say cubic units no matter what. But when you see the similarities like between, you know, wherever you can reduce, you should use those techniques. That way it makes your multiplication a little simple, more simple. Okay, next is um, solids with a circular base. But the volume formula never changes. It's still area of the base times the height. Like that just never changes. So the only difference is our base now is a circular circle and the area of this base is pi r squared. And same here. See that circular base, the area of the base is pi r squared. So all you're doing is taking the area of the base times the height. So area of the base pi r squared h, pi r squared h. Isn't that so great? Vol area of the base times the height. Area of the base is pi r squared times h. Pi r squared times h. But recall that you have the triangle and we're in third dimension. So the similarly as the pyramid was one third a rectangle, this will also be one third. So you'll notice the similarities between the triangles and the rectangles. Okay, so let's try this simple um, volume of the shape below. And again, you don't always have to remember volume. You just need to know all the areas of the shapes and then know that you're going to multiply the height. So in this case, the, here's the area here's of the base, right? So area of the base, don't forget, is pi r squared. Um, and notice our radius here is equal to one meter. So we're pretty good to go. So the volume here is going to be pi r squared, the area of the base, times the height. So we'll have pi times the radius squared, one meter squared, times the height of one and a half meters. So if I just simplify this, I get one pi time uh, cubic, I'm sorry, square meters, right? So one square times pi is just one pi and then meters squared is square meters times one and a half meters. Now, notice that meters squared times meters, right? X squared times X, same, same base, product in between, add the exponents, this is X cubed. And again, volume is always cubic units. That's where all that comes from, right? So we'll have one and a half pi cubic meters. So you can't ever get out of like volume being cubic meters, like a cubic units. Volume is always cubic units and then you just fill in the units to whatever units is in your problem. Of course we don't want to say, oh I filled up the can 1.5 pi uh, cubic meters, right? We will put it in our calculator as 1.5 pi and then round. Notice that here they do give us a dimension with one decimal place. So the proper thing to do is round to one more past that. So I'll round to two decimal places here. So I'll have 4.71. Two is now our test digit and have 4.71 cubic meters. 
Okay, and once again, let me just reiterate, um, if one of our dimensions is given with a decimal place like this one, then the proper thing to do is to round to one more past what's given to us. It's just we use, That's just like a, a practice we do in math where if we need to round our answer, we look for the farthest decimal place in the dimensions and then just our answer is one more of that. So up here, notice we were given all whole numbers. So then if we needed to round, it would be one decimal place past that, which would be the tens place, which we have been doing. But when it comes to the circles, we just have to recognize when where we would round to because we're always going to be rounding when it comes to circles. Let's try another example with spheres. So spheres is similar, except it's just a ball, right? And the ball is going to be where it's uh, circles everywhere. And it's just essentially taking a circle and, and turning it around and around and around and around and around and around. And then it's a circle rotated 360 degrees. But the radius is still the radius. It still goes from the center all the way out to one of the edges. And it's an infinite number of points that make up now the shell, right? And so if we just do the volume here, the volume of a uh, sphere is has its own little entity, right? It's like the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. So all we need for the for spheres, it's really nice because all the only dimension we need is the radius. Unlike all the other ones, we needed a, a me, like three dimensions, right? Here we only need to know the radius. So the volume here is four thirds pi and then three centimeters cubed. And so we get four thirds pi times 27 centimeters cubed. Now at this point I would like to reduce the three out of here and then know that th 27 divided by three is nine and then I'm left with um, four times nine which is 36 pi cubic centimeters. Now, of course, I don't leave it like that. I could leave it like that if they wanted me to, or I could put 36 pi in here and have 113. And then once again, it gave me a whole number. So I'm going to round to the nearest tens place, which would be one past the whole number. My test digit is 9, which means I'm going to have 113.1 cubic centimeters. Okay, so um, the only th difference here is when you're given a, ba a circular base or a rectangular base, that it's always going to be the area times the base. I mean, the area of the base times the height. And then when you get to spheres, all you need to know is the radius, and it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So essentially with volume, you only need to know two formulas, right? That if it's a different base than a sphere, right, it'll be area of the base times the height. And if it's a sphere, then it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, try this last example. Okay, so notice I have a cone here. And this is volume of the cone. Here's my circular base. And it, my circular base, again, has a diameter of 4 feet, which means my radius will be, that's right, you guessed it, 2 feet. And so um, remember that I do need the height here because the height is going to be important when I do the area of the cone because the cone, remember, is going to be the area of the base times the height. I know the area of the base, right, because that's pi r squared. It's a circular base, but the height I don't have here. But I did do this problem in an area application, remember? And let's go ahead and scroll up a little. 
way up here. Here it is, example 6.17. Notice I still have 6 feet, 4, and 6 feet, and so I purposely chose this as a solid. So now we'll do volume, and we don't have to do height. We don't want to redo redundancy. If we found the height of this one, then we can use this. And so let me go ahead and copy this piece down here. Okay, and how we found this height here, so which is the square root of 32. So we already did that work from example 6.17. And so we'll just take that good hard work and put it here, and now we're ready. It's going to be a quick volume. The only other um, part we need to note is this hemisphere. So we're going to have to find the volume of a hemisphere. And so um, we know the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So a hemisphere would be 1 half of the 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, we're almost done. We can just simplify this formula a little bit and just reduce out a 2 here. And that way we get um, that the 1 half of the volume of the sphere is going to be 2 thirds pi r cubed. So this is the one we'll use. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, find the volume. So the volume of this shape is going to be the volume of that um, cone and then plus the volume of the hemisphere. Now, again, um, we don't really care much about the, the actual border, right? We can only care about the boundaries because we're going to fill this up with ice cream, I assume, because it looks like an ice cream cone. And so I think I'll just fill it up with a bunch of um, circle animal cookie um, ice cream that I love so much, and we're going to fill it up. So don't worry about the boundary, whether we're going to include the diameter or not. Remember, we're, this is like area where we just care about boundaries more than the border. So we'll just do volume like we usually do. So let's do volume of the cone, which is the area of the base, so pi r squared. The radius is 2 feet squared times the height, so the height is the square root of 32, and then feet. Plus, okay, so then let me highlight that blue, and then this next one, the plus the hemisphere, which would be this one, 2 thirds pi r cubed, 2 feet cubed. And this one belongs to that hemisphere. There we go. OK, so let's just go ahead and reduce. So I'll have 2 squared is 4. So I'll have 4 pi square root 32 feet squared times feet is cubic feet plus 2 thirds times 8 2 cubed, which is 8, so 8 times 2 is 16 thirds pi, and feet cubed is cubic feet. Okay, so now we, we're no longer multiplying, so we have cubic feet here, cubic feet here, and we can add those together. Um, and then I'll go ahead and put this in the calculator. So here I'm going to have 4 pi the square root of 32 plus 16 thirds pi. Okay, enter. So um, everything is given to us in whole numbers, so I'll go ahead and round to the nearest tenth. And so 4 is the test digits below 5, so it'll be 87.8. So 87.8 and then cubic feet.
So once again, the pieces that we needed to know for this one is the height of the cone, which we can easily always find by using Pythagorean theorem. Since we already had done this in, in example 6.17, we just grabbed it from there. Okay, and then the second part we needed before we even calculated was the formula for a hemisphere. So the formula for the volume of a hemisphere would just be one half the volume of a regular whole sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So one half of the 4 thirds pi r cubed allowed us to reduce out a 2 and get 2 thirds pi r cubed. And that's what we used for down here. And our radius was always two feet. So it worked out really nicely. And then the fact that we really are in a place where we want to be able to calculate these to use in the real world and in our lives, throughout our lives, we would always use the calculator. Like we don't really want to, you know, put it in an algebraic form where we can't use it in conversation. You know, not everyone's going to understand what what is the volume of that ice cream cone? Oh, 4 pi square root 32 plus 16 thirds pi cubic feet. Like no one, who talks like that, you know? But if I asked you in common language in conversation, you would say, oh, about 88 cubic feet. That sounds so much more simpler and so much more of a conversation rather than sounding like a hey, robot. So really take value to these calculations and these formulas because you could be using these formulas in um, in your life where if you apply for a job they may give you a little bit of a diagnostic with math or um, if you want to apply to like a engineering company whatever position they may actually ask about units and if you can actually read the shapes and the in the blueprint so again there's a lot of value to this chapter and a lot of application that you're going to use in your life so you really can take some of this with you